Welcome back to my channel. My name is Louise Claire Johnson. I am the author of Behind the Red Door and I'm back with another monthly reading wrap up for March. So it was kind of weird. Easter was early this year. It's crazy to think today is April 1st and we've already had Easter weekend. Well, technically today is Easter Monday when you're watching this. But yeah, it's funny. I organize my life, my calendar, my planner quarterly. So end of March is the end of Q1, Jan, Feb, March. It's weird to think that we're a quarter of the way through 2024, but here we are. I always say that every year. Time just flies. I definitely am ready for warmer spring weather. We had a couple sprinklings of hot sunny days, then we had a snowstorm. It kind of seems to be spring in Canada. You get a tease of a really hot 20 degrees Celsius day, and then a snowstorm the next day. So who knows, but I'm definitely looking forward to spring and the warmer weather, the longer days in April. But before I can start my TBR pile for that, I wanna go through all the books that I read in March. It was another great reading month. I didn't read as many as January and February. Some books were a bit more of a slog, I would say. It took me longer to kind of get into them. I wasn't as excited to pick them up, but I read to the end and yeah, let's just get started. So the first book that I read was The Women by Kristen Hanna. I saw this all over my Instagram and book talk feeds. I'm sure you did as well. And I did enjoy this book. I liked it. I'll get into some of my qualms with it in a minute. The Women is a book about the Vietnam War as told from the female's perspective. So it sheds a light on the lost stories of all of the women that served in Vietnam. So the main character, Frances or Frankie, follows in her brother's footsteps, goes over to Vietnam as a nurse, and is hoping to get a place on their father's hero's wall. So half of the book takes place in Vietnam, and then we also follow the trajectory afterwards of soldiers coming home from war, Frankie coming home from war, and the PTSD, how the Vietnam vets were treated when they came back to America. So I really like that because I don't feel like there's that many books that touch on the Vietnam War. We have so many World War I, World War II books, but haven't read too many accounts about all of the Vietnam vets. So I really like that this book took place more in the 70s. And if you are a historical fiction lover, you will absolutely love this book. The cinematic descriptions of the setting, especially in Vietnam, what it felt like to be over there, the heat, the sweat, the jungle, the sounds of the helicopters and war, I really did feel transported. Kristen Hanna is a master of setting and description. Some of my qualms, as I mentioned, I felt the romances were a bit cheesy and a bit forced. Maybe they just weren't as true to life or as authentic as I've seen her write in the past. And also just juxtaposed, there's so many storylines and really heavy material that it didn't feel as authentic. It felt more like she had to throw these love stories in there. That could just be my take, but I found them a little bit on the cheesy side. And then my other qualm was just that the book was too long. It didn't need to be over 400 pages. I think if she condensed it a little bit, the action would have moved a little bit faster. We still would have felt the complexities of life at war and life after when you come home. So that was just any good editor would have cut that down, but because it's Kristen Hanna, I'm sure she's given liberties to write at length. And it's evident that there was so much research that went into this book. So I did like all of that historical fact. I do enjoy historical fiction, historical nonfiction, reading about women's stories who are lost in the cracks of history. That's what my book is about, the lost story of Elizabeth Arden. So I really did enjoy all of those aspects and especially from the female's point of view. So overall liked this book, couple minor nitpicky things, but other than that, again, if you like these kinds of historical fiction books, you will enjoy the women. Next up, I read Alphabetical Diaries by Sheila Hetty. She's a Toronto-based author, and this book is basically a creative memoir of sorts. So over a 10-year period, Sheila Hetty took all of her diaries, put them into a computer, and then alphabetized them by sentence from A to Z, or A to Z if you're in the States, and created a book out of it. I think I read somewhere that she had to cut over 50,000 words to make it book length, but each of the chapters is A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And it's not linear, as you can imagine, if you are sorting all of your thoughts over 10 years 
by sentence. All of the sentences get mixed up, which I knew going into that, but it bothered me a little bit more than I thought it would. And I think it was a very clever idea. That's why I was excited to pick this up. I'm also a big Sheila Hetty fan. I love her book Motherhood, Pure Color. This one, I think of all of the books, was my least favorite just because it felt, as you're reading it, there were some beautiful, brilliant sentences. So you have to go kind of slow. I highlighted a bunch of different things, wrote them in my notebook. So for that, I did like it but it is a slog to get through. I do think if it was any other author who tried to come out with a memoir of their thoughts over a 10 year period alphabetized, people might not be as gracious if it wasn't Sheila Hetty because she's just this creative genius. I just think people would think it was a vanity project and a little bit self-indulgent if I'm being very blunt and honest to comb through your thoughts sentence by sentence when there's not a linear form. There was often times she would refer to names that I had no idea who they were, or she and him, they. Like I said, you're not following a linear narrative, you're following her thoughts. But she's a brilliant mind, very observant, very thoughtful person. So that's why I liked a lot of the sentences. So definitely for me, it felt like a fragmented read. And I read somewhere that someone said, you will like alphabetical diaries if you're a clever person or you want to seem like a clever person, which I don't know if that's necessarily true. Books speak to different people in different ways. I liked this book. I really love Sheila Hetty. I will still continue to read everything that she writes. I think she's a definitely a creative genius and I applaud the attempt at a new form of memoir. I think it just, again, a little bit fragmented, a little bit fell flat for me. The next book that I read was Good Material by Dolly Alderton. I adore her. I think she is an amazing, amazing author. My sister got to see her in person. So I was super excited to get a copy of her latest. And I would say I would recommend this book if you are going through a breakup. It is absolutely perfect. The main character is a man named Andy who is coming out of a horrific breakup. He pines for his long lost love, Jen. And the book is really about him in a tailspin at the end of Heartbreak and how he's dealing with that in London. I love books set in London, New York, so this was fun for me to read. Dolly Alderton is known for her witty banter. That's what kept me reading all the way through the clever, funny lines that Andy says. He's a heartwarming character and you feel for him throughout but I will say that there's not really a plot, it's just him pining for Jen, which at the very end, it doesn't give a spoiler alert, but at the end we do get to hear Jen's point of view of the breakup, which I think was an important addition to this book. Otherwise, it really wouldn't have hit home for me, I don't think. But I, again, I like this book a lot. If you like romantic comedy, if you liked Monica Heisey's book, Really Good Actually, then this is in the same vein. You will definitely like this book. Just know that it's about a guy waxing poetic about a heartbreak for the entire book to his friends, to himself, how he's getting through it, how he's getting over it. That's why I said if you're going through a breakup or you recently came out of one or you're thinking of breaking up with someone, this might be an extra interesting read for you to pick up. And yeah, Dolly Alderton's witty banter just kind of keeps you chugging through. The next book that I read was Greta and Valdin. This is the first book that I've ever read set in Auckland, New Zealand. So that was really cool for me. I'm used to reading books, like I said, set in London, New York, Canadian settings. And this is a refreshing book to read set in Auckland. I know nothing, I've never been to New Zealand, but I'd love to go someday. And it's about a pair of queer siblings. They're Russian Maori living in New Zealand and dealing with relationship woes. You get to meet their family. Just really a slice of life book. Again, I wouldn't say it's very plot heavy, more character driven. You alternate chapters between Greta's point of view and Valdan's point of view. Truthfully, the reason I picked up this book in the first place was because of the cover. I love this cover. I think the colors are amazing, the graphics, very eye-catching, very cool girl aesthetic. And then the second reason was because in the blurb it said, for fans of Schitt's Creek and Sally Rooney's Normal People, both of which I really like. Schitt's Creek, you get the humor. Sally Rooney, you get the character, intellect into their head. 
and it did deliver on a few of those things. It was witty and clever. At times I felt like I was trying a little too hard to be witty and clever. So for me, it didn't necessarily live up to the hype of those comps. And I did find myself kind of sometimes not looking forward to picking the book up. I did read all the way through. I feel like at the end, you really get kind of a nice traditional book conclusion. But 90% of the way through the book, it did feel a little bit aimless and more you're trying to read all the witty millennial Gen Z banter that is good, is interesting, but again, felt a little aimless, didn't make me really want to pick it up all the time. So I did like big parts of it. I read all the way to the end. I like reading about slices of life and the dynamics between this family, learning about a culture in a place that I know nothing about. So I'm happy I picked it up. Like I said about the cover, it is definitely one of those cool girl aesthetic books that maybe missed the mark for me a little bit. But again, take with that what you will. The next book that I read was End of Story by A.J. Finn. I really loved his first book, Woman in the Window. I mentioned this in my previous video, but he is a former editor turned writer. For Woman in the Window, he basically wrote the psychological thriller that he wished came across his desk at the publishing house, and it went on to become a number one New York Times bestseller. So this was his follow-up book after that. I was eager to read it because I do remember Woman in the Window was a very fast read for me. The chapters were one page long and I ripped through it. I still prefer Woman in the Window, so if you're gonna read AJ Finn, I would start with that one. This one, really clever premise. It is a reclusive mystery writer who sends a letter to his long-term pen pal and says, I'll be dead in three months, come write my memoirs. So this writer goes to San Francisco and follows the life of Sebastian Trapp a reclusive mystery writer and uncovers some mysteries of his own. I don't want to give any of the spoilers away. I liked this book. I like murder mysteries. If you like Alex Michalides, The Maidens, The Silent Patient, and The Fury is his most recent one, it felt very similar. They both take inspiration from Agatha Christie. Some of the sentences were a little bit hard to follow. I had to read very closely. I don't know if it was the tense that he was writing in or the staccato of it all. Introduces a lot of characters. You have to pay attention to this book. It's not kind of as easy breezy as I felt The Woman in the Window was. But still, if you are a murder mystery psychological thriller fan, And the last book that I read was Cal Newport's latest, Slow Productivity, The Art of Accomplishment Without Burnout. If you have read his book, Deep Work, Digital Minimalism, I always love reading what he comes out with next. He's very clever at kind of taking a concept that we all already know and can relate to, like deep focused work or slow productivity and creating a catchy title or a memorable catchphrase to go with it. Again, this book kind of just had reminders that we all know about, but I really like the principles that he talks about in this book, which are do fewer things, work at a natural pace, and obsess over quality. As a writer, that is something that I can definitely read about, refresh my mind, and try to absorb as often as possible. I listened to this book half as an audiobook and then finished the rest in hardcover. If you like podcasts, I would definitely recommend getting it as an audiobook because it felt like kind of a long form podcast. Could have probably been an article, but again, I like Cal Newport and was happy to read this as my last book of March and a nonfiction book at that. So those are all the books that I read this month. I'm already eager to get started on my April TBR. I'd love to know what you're reading, if you've read any of these. I hope you have an amazing day, an amazing week. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps out this small little channel. And let me know if there's anything else that you'd love to see from me. And with that, I will see you in my next video. Happy reading! Thank you.